I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. Just click on the link in the description below or go to my website, AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. Hi there, I'm Coach Margaret. And today we're going to be talking about why you can't stop thinking about your ex and what to do. What to do. This is very common. Yes, right? it's very, I think very common. Probably every person going through a breakup yes. has a really difficult time trying to stop the thoughts about their ex. It's very intrusive. I had Cheerios for breakfast. My ex loved Cheerios. Yeah. Little daily things like that will come up all yep. of the time. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Like I used to remember that like, oh, I would get off work at a certain time. Where would my ex be? Right. And so at that certain time I would look at the phone because I'd be like, this would be the time I would oh, call them. Yeah, sure. Or they would call me. Right. You know what I mean? And so it would be like even reminders like uh, time or how your day went or yeah. Things like that would always... It's a huge loss. It's a huge gaping hole in your, in your life sudden, suddenly. Yeah. Now, we did one about obsessive thoughts not long ago. Yeah. But I've had some additional thoughts since that I wanted to share with you. Yeah. And it's such a huge topic. It's that... such a huge topic. Um, and if, I don't know if you remember, but a few weeks ago when I did it, I referred to George or Georgina, either one of this couple. Um, and just as we're trying to move on, they keep trying trying to come into our head with those obsessive thoughts. Goodbye, yep. George. I yep. thought I told you goodbye last week, and here you are again. Um, and what I said at the time, what we said at the time, is that those are thoughts from our unconscious letting us know that we need to work more on this process of grieving and getting over, that we're not finished yet. Mm -hmm. And that's why they keep popping up in our head all the time trying sure. to say you need to talk about me a little more you better not have forgotten me yet yeah all right you have to talk about it so one of the obvious things that I neglected to say at that point is with anything puzzling or overwhelming that happens to us in life the first best thing to do is make a narrative make a story so that you have a way to tell yourself and anybody else you choose to share this with uh, what happened Mm -hmm. What happened? Um, my girlfriend dumped me, my boyfriend abruptly said goodbye to me, um, but you have to have a way to tell yourself the story. Maybe also speculating in it, maybe some things you did wrong, or how shocked you were because you didn't see this coming, or what things about him were getting on your nerves, and you may have had the same thought, he just acted first. All kinds of different things. Which could be one of the main reasons that people love the email coaching. Yes. Because they're creating that narrative. They're creating the narrative. Good point, Craig. Good yeah. Good point. They're creating the narrative. Mm -hmm. They are when they talk with us as well. Yeah. Tell me what happened. Mm -hmm. And people will give us the narrative. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good point. But somehow it makes things much more manageable. If you have a story... Um, and you got to be honest, if, if there are parts of it that you need to own, it's important that you do that, and mm -hmm. it's important that you, the other person do that too. So first of all, make yourself a story, okay, um, that you can live with and that you can at least, if not be happy about, have a handle on, an intellectual handle on. Um, it's extremely important to do that in any crisis yeah. of your life. Um, Scarlett O'Hara should have done it at least halfway through, Gone with the Wind. Mm -hmm. um, Otherwise, we can end up being left feeling unlovable and as if this happened for no reason at all. And oftentimes when we talk with people, they'll say, I didn't see it coming, I was blindsided, um, and I feel like it came out of the blue. Yeah. But if we help them to explore a little more, and I'll say more about that in a minute, um, usually that you find out that they have more answers than they think. Yep. Or if you finish the narrative and you still have major questions, um, you want to go on with it. Mm -hmm. But you certainly don't want to be left feeling unlovable. And well, sometimes you're aware that there were problems in the relationship, yes. but you just had no idea that the person would leave you for them. Exactly. I had somebody tell me one time, I thought my accusing my wife of cheating on me all the time was just a minor annoyance. Uh, no, 
it was not a minor annoyance. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know? Understanding where the other person comes, comes from, from yeah. is really difficult for us. And not everyone, to my surprise, assumes that the other person has the same feelings that they do. I mean, if I feel sadness, so I guess you do too. Mm -hmm. um, people don't necessarily make that assumption. And it's important that you make that assumption that, you know, if this would make me feel bad, probably it makes my partner feel bad. Yeah. Um, but we can we tend to become very self-absorbed when we've been with a partner for any length of time. And especially at a breakup when our own anxiety becomes the major topic. Oh, yeah. Right? Okay. So first you want to get a clear picture of what happened and why, if it's possible. It's not always possible to know how other people think. Yeah, sure. And, I get a lot of people that don't seem to have all the puzzle pieces. Right. And I'm yeah. like, we're missing some major puzzle pieces He's here to here, put yeah. this together. Yeah. And they're like, I don't know them yet. Right? I don't know them yet. Yeah, Sometimes exactly. they don't know them Except, yet. No, they don't. Yeah. And there's no more helpless feeling. Um, and we'd like to spare you that. Yeah. Um, recently, I happen to have had several cases where the breaking up partner has absolutely refused to share any reasons um, with their partner. And, and that's that, cruel. Oh, it is cruel. It really is that's cruel. cruel. Yeah. Um, so they're left to guess. But what I have found is that when I talk with them a little further and say, now you know this person pretty well. You knew this person how long, you were with him how long. Um, tell me more about him. Usually people find that they know much more about their ex-partner than they thought they did. Yeah. And that when they really begin to look at that, they do have a better idea than they've been able to share. I think a lot of times they have to talk it out though. Yeah, they have to think out loud. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's one of the ways to put it, that people think out loud with us. Mm -hmm. uh, and we help them make thoughts make sense. Um, but yeah, chances are you know um, enough about your partner to kind of guess. One of the things I have found also with people who refuse to share reasons um, is that there are people who are afraid of being close with others. Mm -hmm. And I know that's always a mind boggle because what we assume is that we're in a relationship because we want to be close to each other and you know everybody likes that and everybody wants that but not everybody can live with it. Mm -hmm. And that we often have to consider the fact that what's reasonable for us may be too much for a partner. And sometimes that even means the person that is attracted to the avoidant yeah. because they know they won't ever get too close. Right. That's true. If you're attracted to someone who avoids relationships, um, well, you may have made a good decision because neither of you wants too much closeness. That would work. I talked to a guy today that I thought that was going on with him. Really? Yeah. Really? That they were both avoidant? Yeah. And yet they wanted a relationship. How sad. Mm -hmm. I hope they find a way if that's what they want. And I, I said to him that I thought part of the appeal to the girl he was interested in is, and she had a lot of issues, like yeah. she had a long history of abuse and yeah. all kinds of things. And I said, you know what? I said, if this girl didn't have any of those issues, would you even have wanted to date her? And, and he, he said, was like, huh. <laughs> it must be what's familiar I, to he's him. He's like, I need to think about that. It and must like, be what's familiar to him, what he's trained to do. Sure. Um, but that's one of Frank... Craig's favorite words is counterintuitive. And sometimes, you know, you say, well, I've done everything for so-and-so. I did this for them. I did that for them. And because we all have a need for autonomy also, it may have been too much. Um, yeah. Yeah. So there's often that part of it. And it's hard to get at that sometimes. If after all this hard work you've just done, doing your narrative and figuring out as best you can where your partner was coming from, and reminding yourself that you are still lovable no matter what this person thinks. If after all that you're still finding it difficult to stop the obsessive thoughts, I would suggest that you, th you do a little more in-depth exploring. One of the obvious questions, well it's not obvious unless you're in the business, is have you had a series of losses? Because if people have had a series of losses in the last, say, three years, then it's going to be extremely difficult to deal with this loss. Mm -hmm. And it may be necessary to kind of go back 
and come to terms with some of the earlier losses before you even get to this one. Yeah. Okay. And I've known that to happen. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I often ask, has, have there been any recent deaths in the family? Mm -hmm. um, so that's one thing. The other thing is, does this person, this partner that you can't get out of your head, does this person remind you of a parent? Because that can be a very, very personal, powerful issue. Absolutely. Yeah. And that can skew your thinking while you're in the relationship and when you're leaving the relationship, that you feel like you're abandoning not just your partner, but your family. Yes. Whether or not you're the one who initiated the breakup. Mm -hmm. okay? Absolutely, yes. So if you do all of these things and you still don't feel good, you might want to think about your local mental health clinic. Mm -hmm. Okay. You cannot go wrong by working on yourself and investing in yourself. No, you cannot yourself. ever go wrong by doing that. And when you go back and you ask people, you know, what their self-talk is, what kinds of things they think of themselves, you're really are alarmed by what you hear. Um, I've heard several people just in the last couple of weeks say that they wonder if they're unlovable. Very few people in this world are unlovable. And none of them have met us. Okay. I think we worked for one of them. I think we did. <laughs> yes, I think we did work for one of them, yes. Back there somewhere, mm -hmm. yes. Um, but, you know, so ask, don't be afraid to ask. And for some people, remember that your being able to move on after a relationship is not about them. It's about you. If somebody refuses to give you reasons, there's no law that we can enforce that will make them do it. Yeah. So you have enough resources within yourself, inevitably, to move on. So don't put that don't put that ball in somebody else's court. Yeah. All right. And it's it's hard to get there. It is hard. And it takes time to get there. And we don't expect you to get there overnight because many of you won't. And you know sometimes breakups take a year or even years to get over yes and i think we're going to do a video on that soon yes we are okay great uh, because people think there's something wrong with them if in you know three to six months they haven't recovered and we have to remember that this is an instant society which does things quickly and there are some process things you can't do you mm -hmm. can tell feelings to hurry up and resolve but they won't do it no matter how nicely you ask i've noticed that <laughs> okay yeah, could you please let Mr. So-and-so get over this in, in, the, in the next three months? He really wants to move on. Sure. No, you can't hurry it. Working through a breakup takes time. It takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of hard work and recognizing things about yourself that you may not like, acknowledging them or even seeing them for the first time because it's not easy to see our shortcomings and sometimes it's really scary and sometimes yes, we feel embarrassed or ashamed. Yes. yes. And, you know, all you can do is grow from that and learn from that and make changes and decide to do things differently. But you also have to like yourself. We all like other people as they are and with their shortcomings and their warts. But very few people can do that for themselves. Mm -hmm. And still, I'm a good person even though I have the following faults. Here's the four-page list. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, it's interesting. It is. How we, we are more accepting of our friends and family with their oh, faults, yes. but not our own. And how often do you hear, well, I gave him the benefit of the doubt. Did you give it to yourself? No. And I'm sure a lot of that had to do with maybe how our parents talked sure. to us. Sure. And that the, the, the words that they put on us That's and right. what would they would say to us when we were little. Yep. That's how, why you have to work through things. And that's how you change them. And that's, that's why grow. we say, you know, just because you may feel like your ex isn't going to come back doesn't mean they won't. And if you don't continue the personal growth, whether it be three months or six months and you just give up, you go back to your old ways, either you're going to get another opportunity with your ex and it'll fall apart or you'll find somebody else that you love and, and get attached to. Right. And that falls apart too. And then you're stuck and you're back to where you were at the beginning of this breakup. Yeah. Maybe even worse, because now you feel even worse. Now you feel even worse, yeah. So work on yourselves. That's our message. Absolutely. Right? Okay. And when you want to get our help personally, just go to our website, askcraig.net, sign up for the coaching option that works best for you. I do email coaching or Skype coaching. If you got to get with me right away, I do offer emergency Skype coaching. Margaret also does Skype coaching. I am available now. 
I would love to talk with you. So just click on Margaret on the top of my website and that's how you can talk with her. Make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. I always forget to ask you guys to do that. Okay. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And we will talk with you soon. Hi, I'm Coach Margaret, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist with 35 years experience. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me to get professional help on your situation. Go to askcraig.net to sign up for a personal coaching with me.